Hello there, you beautiful people. My name is Willow, and welcome back to Replay Review. After Effects and shit. Woo! Editing. So yeah, this is gonna be a new series on the channel related to FAF, or I guess any game that has a replay system. If you are a Patreon or a channel member at a certain dollar amount, you can submit to me replays to be reviewed. And today we have a replay submitted by Icy Nightmare on the map Diversity, which is a 10 by 10 kilometer map. The way this works is we go to our player's uh, view, we can see their economy, we can see the minimap, we can see their vision and intel, and we kind of watch them and just see what they're gonna do and talk about it. So, without a further ado, let's get into the replay review. We're starting off with a first factory, which is pretty standard. Um, you don't generally see anybody start first mechs or pigeon anymore. And we have Icy Nightmare going for a land factory instead of an air factory. Air factory, I feel, is a little bit more for cheese. And, of course, going for power gens right after. On diversity, you do have the issue of your first hydro is quite far away. You can see it on the minimap there. And uh, you need some power gens to get through it. He's going to go three P gen, maybe even four, and then start building mexes. And let's go ahead and hit shift to see how the queue is going. He has two engineers out and he's going for a striker, which is a, a pretty decent uh, opener. I Two engineers, striker, maybe another engineer or possibly a scout before that. No, he's going double striker. He went three P gen, two mechs, one P gen, and then he's shift queued. And if you did not know about this, move before you do build orders. Helps with build range. He's going to be at four P gens and two mechs right now. He's in a little bit of a mass stall, but as soon as he stops building the pigeon, the mass stall goes away. And, oh, he messed it up just a little bit. Oh, he caught it. Uh, if you do the move order slightly incorrectly, it's it's better to kind of over predict your build range if you're gonna do the move order. Uh, just predict it to where it's definitely gonna be inside, but not right next to it. Uh, that helps a little bit and now another move order to build. I think he could have built without a move order. Um, the build range is the first orange kind of circle. You can kind of build like just like a tiny bit outside of it. Uh, it's a little bit wonky. But Icy Nightmare is a higher rated player. With lower rated players we're going to probably be a little bit more I guess the word would be critical, trying to give them more hints and tips, but Icy is a better player than me, so this time we're going to be trying to learn, and I'm also going to kind of meme on him, because Icy Nightmare, longtime channel supporter, and somebody I have affectionately named the Titan King. I don't know if affectionately is the uh, right word there, but that sounded right. That sounded right, didn't it? I don't know. Let me know down in the comments. So, we've been tracking the commander so far. Let's go ahead and stop doing that, though because we can see over here he's gotten a few units out he has engineers out he's expanding very well you can take a lot of hints from this like his first engineer came to build hydro second just building further out mexes uh you just he just has a decent economy started up now he has three engineers set to build factories which is a little bit more than I think most players do. I generally like to stick to two engineers building factories. He decided to not have his comm help build any factories, deciding to get it out onto the field a little bit earlier. If we take a step back, we can see his allies also doing pretty well with their expansions. And overall, everything going good. There's a lot of reclaim. We're going to have to see if he does some manual reclaim, and he indeed does. Manual reclaim is a little bit faster. You can even move order with reclaim. To help but if you just manual reclaim it's still faster on APM than like attack move or patrol and with patrol you'd probably get a lot of these trees before you ever get this and, and even with attack move you wouldn't be grabbing the mass first he needs to be a little bit careful this won't fill his mass coffers but if he has any automatic engineers on reclaim he's gonna yep they're gonna stop and that's gonna mean he has to probably requeue this up because yeah, he has to re this up, and he realizes that as well. He sends him on a move order to go build. I see very good with the APM and managing all of his units at the moment. If you're if you if both of your bars get too high, they just kind of stop auto reclaiming. Uh, looks like we're gonna be going into a power star right now. He's not getting an upgrade or anything, so this is just a case of spending just way too much. He does have multiple engineers now building power, uh, but he probably is gonna have to pause a few factories to stop this power stall. 
Um, I don't think he can build enough pigeons fast enough to just try and brute force his way out of it. So the question is, does Icy go for the pause, or is he just going to eat the power stall for a little bit? It does seem like he's getting up some pigeons relatively quickly. Over here in the center, there's a bit of fighting going on between Thernis Haley, another channel supporter, not a patron, so he, we won't be seeing a... Uh, a replay review out of him anytime soon, but it is nice to see Icy playing with some of the other players from our Discord link down in the description. He has a few units going out. Looks like he's going to be trying to do a run by over towards the red player who is Saurian AI. We're not going to be introducing all of the players, of course. It's not a cast. And there's a T1 bomber down here. You can see F uh, Fazerth over here starting to cause issues. I think it would be. It'd be a, probably a pretty good idea for Icy to start throwing a few units down here. His ally Makapaka decided to go very heavy for an early eco, and if he can protect his ally's eco just a little bit, that could help him out. But also, he needs units here on the front as he's coming up to Raza, Razarurn, who is the Seraphim kind of adjacent to him. Kind of, It's the most likely opponent of his. And uh, he, he does probably need to be dealing with this. It's a Seraphim. Could be going for a very nasty Rambo com. Froze Earth is, uh, or Foes Earth is now being forced back into the water by Makapaka. Uh, he managed to pick up two T2 mechs. There's still a T2 mech, so it's not horrid. But yeah, overall with the economy balance, Icy doing a pretty good job. He's staying pretty much stuck at around 40 to 50 mass in his reserve. This isn't hitting zero right here. That's the important bit to look at. Um, if it is hitting zero, you are in a mass stall. Right now he's not. Reclaim is kind of helping out a lot with that. But he has one T2 mechs and another one on the way. Very slowly upgrading mechs. I know Icy has a has a preference for doing what he's doing right now, where he has a bunch of mechs upgrades queued and pauses them. I know that in the past he used uh, he usually uses just one or two engineers in the beginning, and then adds more engineers, and he doesn't let the mechs upgrade on its own. He's gotten an energy storage for overcharge. That's something that's very good to remember. And here in the middle, we now have some fighting going on between Icy Nightmare and his opponent Rays. And it looks as though he has a bit of an advantage, but I think this might be a bit overextending. He's going into the production of his opponent. Uh, Raz is getting a lot of damage down onto his units right now. Raz is, I think, he's going to be able to push back Raz, but he does not have enough reinforcements here at the moment to make this a, a complete win scenario. So this is going to leave a lot of reclaim right here. I think this might be a little bit over aggressive and I think Icy agrees he's going to start pulling back. It might also just be a case of Icy trying to get a uh, rank of veterancy by constantly keeping his pop calm in fights. He does have good production but I think he's overstayed his welcome and he probably agrees with that. Starts moving back. And we have T2 already finished up for Icy. It's it's kind of weird. I don't know how I want to do these replay reviews. He has his first T2 engineer is going to be building a T2 support factory. Is that that's what I call these factories that aren't HQs. And his second T2 engineer is going to get some help from T1 NGs to build pigeons. And even his ally helping build the pigeons is quite nice of him. And uh, that is overall going to be pretty good. He has a few idle NGs. And speaking of which, you should have that pulled up. And overall, I see down to 9,500 health, but he's managed to get up that first uh, rank of veterancy, which is going to give him a little bit more region. Not too crazy region, but just a little bit more. And he's starting to run out of reclaim on the map, so definitely needs to put some kind of priority on the max upgrades. He's only up to about 35 mass a second at the moment. And uh, you're, he's going to have to start pausing things to get upgrades. Once you run out of reclaim entirely, that's whenever a, I, I think a lot of players start having trouble, is when the reclaim goes away, you kind of start running out of uh, resource to both have units and upgrade mexes. You usually just need to pause some factories, and we can see a, pa a pause on a certain factory back here. Probably going to see a few more pause or just stop production altogether. 
as he's slowly transitioning into T2 army and economy. A T1 air factory. This is something great that everybody should do. If you, it doesn't matter what position you are on, and on what map, if you're getting to like the around the 10 minute mark where intel becomes way, way, way more useful, just start getting up a factory. You can even build some interceptors to try and deal with stuff like this where his opponent has a T1 bomber he's trying to use to harass. There's a T1AA here that's going to shoot that one down, but you can have inties to just help you out. There are now sparkies out on the field for Icy Nightmare. Sparkies with their higher build power of 17 versus a normal T2 engineer sitting at 12 are able to only build defensive structures, structures that shoot or shields or TMD. Uh, it's only built, it has specific buildings it can build, but overall is a very useful unit. You can see all of these things are going to be built right here. He's going to build a triad. I wouldn't be surprised to see him also build a few other kind of uh, triads, maybe even a shield generator up here on the front. Just try and give himself a bit of a point to anchor his units to. So that way he has a defensive position to hold on to. And the Sparky is going to continue to go forward. Could even see some reclaim coming out of them. They are of, they are capable of reclaim. And Icy is currently working with his Sparkies, getting a few units always around the Sparkies and building within the range of his T2 PD. He's going to PD, PD creep for a little bit here. He can see his opponent is on an upgrade. I believe that was a gun upgrade. If he got a chance to look at it more in depth, you could also just send a Lobo out and just get that vision on it and you can look at it. Whenever a comm is upgrading, which if we see somebody upgrading here soon, we will go ahead and look at it. Uh, we have nano repair on the way for Raz, and it was gun speed range. But <clears throat> if you can get vision on uh, on a com while it's upgrading, you can get an idea of what they're upgrading. You can see whether it's right, left, right, or left arm or back. And see right here, you just look at the com. You see that all of the giant glowy bits are over on the left hand side of the com. But if you turn it around, that's the right arm. So he is getting the gun upgrade, or he is getting. Uh, other than gun upgrade, you just kind of need to memorize it. I think the other option is RAS, so you you can pretty safely assume it's 11 minutes. People don't really RAS rush anymore. Icy was a part of the days where they did, and uh, usually it's going to be gun speed and range with the UEF comm, and with the the only comm that has a little bit of struggle is going to be Cybern, where uh, both their T2 and their gun upgrade are on the same arm, so you can kind it's harder to tell which one they are going for. The damage and range upgrade does finish up in time for him, uh, but he's going up against an enemy comm with gun speed and range and possibly a damage and range comm. Yeah, he's up against three comms right now if you do include Raze who could come forward to try and deal with him right now. Icy is taking a very forward position. He's the only player on his team even close to being in the middle of the map and he's kind of just out here. He's going to have a lot of trouble dealing with this. He's the f he's the only one here with a large amount of T2 units other than Saurian AI who's having to deal with the units out from Thernus Haley. But Icy Nightmare is kind of just trying to push forward with him by himself. And in team games, it is it, cum communication is good. I wouldn't be surprised if Icy Nightmare and Thernus are in a call right now because the second that they started pushing on him, Thernus committed all of his forces to kind of alleviate the uh, pressure. But even if you're not in a voice call, you can very easily just go into chat and say, uh, just ask politely. Don't 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 flame your teammates, but ask politely for like, say, hey, uh, I'm struggling here. I want to hold this position. Can you all support me in any way? And sometimes you'll get a yes. Sometimes you'll get a no. Sometimes somebody will tell you, fuck you, go backwards. And uh, when that happens, die and make them pay for being assholes. <laughs> So the triad field is growing. He has these Sparkies constantly out here building a few more defenses. I don't know if it's worth it anymore. He can now see that you can make a reasonable guess looking at that. That's gun. You can tell it's gun for sure. And it's probably nano region with how little he cares about the damage the triads are doing. Uh, I don't know if the right call is to continue to build triads just closer together. It does seem that there's enough right here to kind of force Raze back along with the unit spam out from his ally, kind of moving northward to try and dissuade Raz from coming forward. And over on the north side, his allies are kind of having struggles, but not, not collapsing yet. So I don't think he needs to react to that just yet. And over down here, we have... 
a few factories have been reclaimed. He's managed to get more more of these uh, more of these mexes up to T2, and of course he's just slowly upgrading. He's always upgrading just one mex at a time. He's usually assisting it, and that's that's usually the best way to go about it. He's only up to 41 mass a second, um, not very much further from where he was a little bit ago. But he has access to reclaim again. He has this T1 factory out here. It's not currently doing it because I guess maybe he hit, yeah he hit control shift realized there's not enough of a mass field for him to need more engineers. But if there's a big mass field like right here, you could argue this is big enough to warrant reclaim. Just have this build T1 engineers and attack move to right here. Uh, the way that would look is you grab the factory, you press for me you hit W, you Alt right click and. Uh, your units will go and do that. Engineers have a larger reclaim range whenever that happens. So yeah, that's just kind of general hints and tips trying to help you all out with your own uh, FAF experience. Nano repair now on the way for Icy Nightmare. He's about 45% in rising. Uh, his economy is well balanced enough to afford this. I think he may have paused. Yeah, he did pause a T2 factory during this, or maybe that's been paused for a little while. You might want to unpause that here in a little bit, but overall... Oh, that's a T1 factory. That's just making engineers. That's not significant. Overall, things going pretty well. Deciding to go for T3 land. Uh, we're about 15 minutes in. He started this upgrade not too long ago, and he's... It seems he's really focused on not stalling, but I think a mass stall is about to start, um, and he just kind of needs to be careful. He has... T2 Pigeons being built further up. He's spreading out his power quite well. He has one T2 Pigeon way back here, one up here. I think that building all of your power in one spot can be good, but uh, like can be good if you build a bunch of shields around it. But overall, it's slightly more risky than spreading it out and just kind of building it wherever you wherever you can, wherever your build power can easily get to. Uh, more triads going up. Seems he's very worried about the threat of that Rambo com coming out from Raze, and he had, is this a transport play? I don't know if this is a transport play, but damn, I see, I'm missing things. Uh, this was either a run by, which I think it was a run by, you see all this dead here? Uh, this dead stuff here, this is probably a run by, he ran by the forces of Sorian AI, and now he's into the back line, he has five, er, he has a five vet pillar over here and other two vet pillars, and he's just getting into the back line. He's killed off a lot of mexes, and he's gonna be killing off even more. Mex is arguably the hardest thing to replace. Um, I guess replacing power is also difficult. His ally has died, as I said, we're not really paying attention to that, but with his ally dying, this is gonna be an opportunity to see what you need to do whenever your ally right next to you dies. Icy is generally really good at even taking back this area, and he's going for a T3 max. This is going to be huge, and he had the wherewithal to remember that he had these run by forces, and also remember to target them. If he kills off this T3 mass extractor, it's super worth. If not, well, it was a run by force. It already got its value. So these units going for this. Other units running by into the back of another opponent's base, just trying to keep units and keep his opponents having to react to him. It's a very good strategy. It looks as though this T3 mass extractor is going to live with just a couple hundred HP, but that that's a T1 bomber attack. If that were me, I'd be throwing a T1 bomber at that. Or multiple. <laughs> Kill off that T3 mass extractor. Uh, I see moving north with his comm, um, and over here to the south, we don't see it yet, but I would assume, yep, he has a factory gonna start building T2 engineers or sparkies, or both, just to try and get some stuff going on down here. He has units re, uh, redirected to the southern area, he has a lot of T1 bombers out, just trying to suppress the units out from Fro Foes Earth and he's going to be able to take over this area. I'd like to see a reaction with these engineers. I don't think you need these engineers assisting this air factory anymore. I, I'd like to see all of these engineers just go start reclaiming and rebuilding this area. He has a Sparky now out over here. I would, ooh, yeah. So this is, this is a strategy. He's gonna be going for building multiple triads over here so he doesn't have to worry about this area quite as much, maybe even a flak or two. And he's gonna be moving forward you, I, I would assume he's going to move forward, or he's going to just send units out here to build. 
question is, does he just go straight for T2 mexes or does he go with the T1? Does seem as though units are gonna be going for T1 and one of them is gonna go for reclaim, so very valid. But you just wanna get units over here as quickly as possible. I think that he, he could have even been a little bit faster. He could have just pulled all five of these engineers and just started going even before the Sparky finished. T1 bombers coming in, trying to bomb off the T2 power generator. Gonna get the T2 power generator. He has a pretty strong air presence now, so I guess assisting the air factory was probably a little bit worth it. And uh, is he is he gonna go for the T2 T3 mechs? Did he remember that the T3 mechs was damaged? Is that something he remembered? The T3 mechs is at 178 HP. Oh, I don't think Icy remembered that that mechs was so close to dying. It seems as though he's still going for possibly power generators or maybe even build power. Yep, build power. A lot of build power going down there. I see doing quite well with the bomber harass right now. Constantly throwing bombers in this direction. But T3 land and he even pinged it for his teammates, which is really good. Whenever you see somebody get to T3 or even T2, just put it out. It's, uh, if you if you don't know the hotkey, it's right here. Uh, I, think that, I think it's like F7 or F8, maybe even F9 on your keyboard. And you can just put these markers down and uh, build up a pretty useful uh, set of intelligence. And now Icy's gonna walk forward. Nano repair on the comm along with gun. I'm gonna be helping out a little bit. The Scorcher over here just bombing whatever it can. And Icy's economy, he's starting to have issues with power as he's getting all of this reclaim in. And I'm assuming he's getting upgrades and just spending so much more with all of this reclaim. Uh, but overall, I think that he's gonna still be eco- he's gonna be balanced relatively well, and he's even balancing his power. He's balancing both mass and power. Looks like he's having trouble spending all of his mass, which would not be surprised to see, like, some massive project just be thrown up right now. Just upgrade multiple mexes to T2 at the same time, so that way you don't overflow. Or maybe he'll just overflow. I mean, overflowing in team games is not that horrible. It doesn't necessarily hurt your team as long as somebody is spending the mass. Not that I would ever recommend overflowing. Like, you, it, it is something you should avoid. You should be using all of your mass because you want to have the impact. Uh, you don't necessarily want to use your allies as a crutch. But it does look like he might overflow here in a second he just doesn't have the power to utilize his build power uh he could start building a pigeon right now a t3 pigeon and i think that might be enough if he goes for it uh still not overflowing still still very much so on the edge of the knife with the uh perfect eco he's been perfect pretty much so far this entire game with the uh eco he's he's had a couple of power stalls but that that happens almost every game and kind of is regardless of rating he got out of the power assault exceptionally quickly so you can for can forgive for that a little bit he has t3 engineers now going quite idle this is an apm thing he's also trying to retake all of this area that was formerly his allies he's trying to manage the enemies over here the units out from foes he's also dealing with some harassment coming out from Ray's towards his forward triad position. I don't think Ray's can just walk up to this just yet, so that's not that's not going to be a major threat on the horizon. As T2 Air is now on the way, he has a T3 power generator started. He's going to be in a power stall while he builds that, and usually you're going to be in a power stall if you're building T3 Air. Sniper bots are firing onto Icy's comm. I, I, I wonder if he notices it because if he doesn't notice this in time, yeah, he needs to start falling back right now. This is a very easy way to walk to your death. He doesn't have enough intel. If there's one thing I think I'd criticize, it's the level of intel that Icy does have. It seems like there's a lot of dark and a lot of units he just doesn't see on the field. I don't even think there's stealth field generators here. Uh, this this should be upgraded to T2 once that T3 pigeon's done. That needs to be a T2 or T3 radar. And units are going to be pushing back Raze for a little bit, but Raze is on T3 land and he needs to get T3... He, I mean, he has T3 land, but he needs to get T3 production out here soon. His opponent got to T3 land first and is building arguably one of the better units the Seraphim has, the uh, sniper bot. And uh, he's going to use T1 bombers and his remaining T2 forces to try and push that back. His comm's gonna fall back now. It's getting a little bit later into the match, and falling back with your comm is 
generally a decent idea once you start thinking, okay, there's a good chance I'm gonna die. Uh, T2 transports now being produced by this air factory. Gonna be interesting to see what he decides to do with that, or maybe even these are T1 transports, but he's up to T3 and he's building Titans. As I said, this man is the Titan King. He is the king of building titans. Reclaiming all of the T1 p is going to get that mass back for something else. He's getting a lot of assistance onto this support factory, which is going to T3. And he's going to get a lot of T3 production up. Up to 80 mass a second after taking up all, taking over all of this area. And he still has a few more mechs to grab over here. And I don't think he has a T3 mechs yet. He might, but if he does, I don't know where it is. And overall, just starting to slowly build up his economy and build up his, his production of T3 units. He's going to have multiple factories that are going to go to T3 with a heavy assistance, so he's going to have this very quickly. Going to be in a mass stall while he does it. T3 engineers, a lot of build power, and very easy to mass stall with. Uh, and T2 transport starting to come out onto the field. He has Titans coming up to the front. Titans not going to fare well against the sniper bots. Uh, sniper bots going to be able to deal with the Titans quite easily, so we're going to have to see how he decides to use this. He has now three T3 factories, and he's just continuing to do exactly what he needs to do. I think that, yeah, you just kind of have to abandon the front and stop sending units you know, so far up. The, the sniper bots are just something you can't deal with right now. You have T2 air, so you could maybe go for something like, I don't know, some kind of like gunship harass, but that only works until they build a flak. Saurian AI over here, while while Icy is just kind of ecoing up and getting his production up, we'll watch uh, a little bit rest of the map. And Thernus uh, Haley over here, going to be putting pressure on the Saurian AI. Saurian AI may be in risk of dying. These bricks have a lot of damage output, and he's going to have to walk around at his allies calm. The fact that this dude hasn't been scouted all game is just a straight up, like, mistake. Not necessarily on Icy, even though Icy has had so much air, you could just throw an air scout over there, but... The fact that he's been completely unscouted is a little bit silly. Uh, Saurian AI is going to be trying to push up again. I don't think this is the right play. As Icy is building up a decent force of Titans and shield generators. He has now He's now getting up even more. I think this right here might be a template. Yes, this seems to be a template. And these two mass fabricators are going to be used to lower the cost of building titans and it's it's really nice because mass fabricators mass storage on them is nice but it's uh you can use them a lot easier than using t3 or t2 mexes to uh to to lower the cost of building with factories saurian ai still alive i'm, I'm i don't know why but i'm so interested with this i like seeing thernus and the way he does things <laughs> as well I see now having a a large group of uh, a large group of titans. He does have a couple of transports. He could be going for a titan drop. I know I've seen him do it quite a many times, and he's going for almost his signature upgrade at this point. Everybody knows I see is gonna get that tactical missile upgrade onto the com. His economy is kind of suffering. It, this is definitely a pretty big mass stall. Um, and I think it's just going to get worse because he's about to have more production. Maybe he's upgrading mexes to T3. And yeah, he is upgrading a mex to T3, which is going to help out a little bit. But all of these T3 engineers are using up so much of his mass economy. And we have transports. Now he's using a transport beacon. He's using a ferry. I don't know if using ferry helps a lot. I mean, I guess maybe it helps like with just getting them loaded. Oh, this, is this just a micro trick? Can you get stuff loaded easier if you do this? Because it seems like the second... Yep, he got rid of the fairy after they all got loaded. That is a useful little bit of knowledge. I'm learning things from this. Holy hell. All right. Icy Nightmare is pinging an attack move over onto the base. I wonder if he saw something. We're going to get a cinematic shot over here. Of Titans flying through the air. And those there goes the Titans. Watch them as they go. 
So the Titans are gonna be dropped and there was a Yathoda on the way. I think that's what Icy was pinging. And it looks as though he's gonna need, he needs to get the build power killed very quickly. There's a T3 mobile shield that's gonna go down. It looks like he even manually targeted it. T1 PD gonna be thrown up very quickly, but Titans are more than capable of dealing with it. There's gonna be a large reaction of units running back. He needs to keep moving. He's This is still a raid. It's still a drop. It's not gonna be holding up to the continued production of his opponent, but it looks as though he really wants to kill off the P Gen. He wants to kill off all of the build power. He wants to stop this Yathota from existing. And it seems as though he's pretty sufficiently gotten rid of enough of the, enough of the build power in the economy to stop raids from having that Yathota anytime soon. So he's gonna continue to raid back here. He's constantly giving them units, constantly running away from the main force. The main force is pretty strong and targeting key structures as he goes, killing off power generators. That's what his focus is. And with this play, you can see that raise has gone down to relying on overflow from his allies. And that's gonna be difficult. He's gonna move north to now start putting pressure on Saurian AI. And Saurian AI is, this comms up here, the response of this is going to be a little bit more difficult than I think Saurian realizes. He has spearheads on the front now coming up to deal with this. There's Percival's out from Saurian AI over here trying to protect. These spearheads moving into the range of Percival's seems like a mistake. Yep, that's, that's a mistake, but you only have so much APM. I'm sure he's really focused on the raid up here and maybe even setting up another drop. Yep, he has another drop getting ready to go from the looks of it. And he might just... Yep, he's sending all of his titans back. The transport's all going to run out and get it. I love this fairy technique. So you set up a fairy and you have it move to a bunch of locations. Sorry, AI gets killed by Thernus Haley. That's not something we were watching. But he sets up a fairy, and if you shift Q, he sets it up to go to a bunch of different locations. So that way he can just wait until they're all loaded, select all of them, and then just send them out to pretty much anywhere he wants. Uh, Foes is in a risky position. Where are these transports going to go is the question. I don't think dropping on Foes is a good play. You you can't really kill him off. He's so close to the water. Uh, you need to go for probably torpedo bombers to kill him off. And it seems as though he's going to go for yet again another drop on top of the chicken. But no, he cancels the drop the last second because there's flak. And he's going to move northward. Huh. I don't know if I'd cancel that drop. You're already there. Just finish the drop, I would think. But, And he's dropping to an area where there's no real structures over here. Uh, raise, oh, maybe he realized that the Yathoda was about to finish, so it was going to die anyways. I don't know how he would have realized that, though. There, there, there's almost no way to tell. He did damage the Yathoda, so... I don't know. I'll, I guess in the comments, I see if you're watching, that seems like a misplay to me. I think you should have just continued with the drop and drop down and killed off the build power. Were you worried about the comm? Because the comm was there and that is a Rambo comm, so could have just killed off your units? An interesting question. Both of the northern players have now died, so the game is basically hinging on this chicken. I think that's the chicken right there moving forward, this unit right here. I Icy has not seen that the chicken is completed yet, so Icy just doesn't know if the chicken is completed, which is uh, valid. Uh, Foes is down here. He's walking into Ravagers. He's killed off a few mexes for Icy, but it's not affecting his eco too horribly. He's given a bunch of T2 transports over to Thurnus Haley yet again. Teamwork and communication. Looks as though brick drops are the order of the day now. And the chicken has shown up on the front. We know it's the chicken. We know it's right there. We need a solution to this. There's one Ravager back here that's not going to do very much for you. T1 bombers maybe, but even that is a questionable play. It seems as though all of the titans that were dropped over there are going to be able to get into the back line and kill off all of the eco for Ra Raza. So Raza is going to have to, uh, yeah, Raza is going to have to make this chicken count. And Icy needs to have a response to this. Seems as though building Ravagers is his response, but I don't think that's going to work. Uh, he's Probably just gonna need to yeah at this point the snipe the snipe the calm is the easiest way to deal with this But maybe not the chickens taken some damage and there's a ton of bricks showing up from Thurnus Haley Just trying to I guess distract the chicken chicken keep it away There's not enough bricks here to straight out kill it and the bricks have a lower range. So Maybe he's just trying to distract keep it from just running into icy nightmares base 
Icy has his Titan still running around. As I said, Titan King is still just running around with him, causing issues. They're pushing into the main base of Raza. Raza's comm is here. His comm does have those multiple upgrades, but Raza control K's as he sees the units here. He realizes he's dead. He realizes the chicken is going to die, and that is the end of the game for him. And I won't be surprised if Foz Earth decides to control K now. Nope, Foz Earth just comes on to land with his Seraphim comm, his, his Rambo comm, and is going to die to Titans. Shift G, move orders being used to stop Foz Earth from continuing to move towards the water. And uh, while it's going to take a little bit, he's going to die, especially with bricks now showing up onto the field. He can't outrun the bricks, and the bricks are in range, so he is dead. And with that, that concludes our first replay review. Thank you to my patrons. If you want to have your replay reviewed, and you are, you, you trust me, this is this is a much more positive review than some of them will be. It's going to be a little bit different each time with each player and their rating level and how much knowledge I can provide. But I wanted to bring some informational kind of content to you all where I can help you learn FAF and have some fun and kind of use my skills as a caster. So yeah, with that out of the way, I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye